welcome. In today's session, we are going to discuss on how engineering is like a social experimentation. In this module, we are going to discuss about what is experimentation, benefits of experimentation, similarities between engineering and standard experiments, contrasting engineering and standard experiments, engineers as responsible experimenters, conscientiousness, relevant information, moral autonomy and accountability. So, what we see is like when we talk of experimentation, experimentation is a very important part of all things like projects which are and it is a matter of concern in the sense because we need to follow certain principles while we are doing experimentations. Engineering projects as a it can be viewed as a total as totality as an experiments. What is then the um, why it can be considered any engineering projects can be viewed as an experiment in totality is like or in, in engineering projects also in many cases preliminary tests and simulations are conducted out to make sure that the best prototype is prepared and before it is taken further to making it a reality. So, like in science we do uh, experiments in lab situations in a simulated conditions maybe in a controlled conditions to find out what is the cause and effect happening like an of and what are the reactions may be in chemicals happening to and find out what are the precautions needs to be taken before it is done in a large scale. So, similarly in engineering projects also like preliminary tests or simulations are conducted to make sure like the best prototype is uh, prepared uh, because in engineering what we need to keep in mind like the safety and um, health issues of the beneficiaries are like one of the major responsibilities of the engineers. So, without testing something preliminary uh, and uh, doing a like pilot run of it, we cannot launch a product in a mass scale or try to do something in a mass scale because in that case the hazards will be because in that case the hazards will be multiplied many fold if something wrong happens. So, uh, in that sense more specifically from the time it is decided the project is to be pursued into reality actually experimentation starts for engineering. So, the experimental tests that are conducted serve as a basis for more detailed design. So, what we can understand like it is a sort of like um, ongoing process we do something maybe we find certain mistakes have been done or something is not working according to our plan then we need to change it retest it and finally after a lot of many of iterations uh, generally we come to the end product or design. So, like an example before a road construction begins researchers in civil engineering labs might be asked to prepare different samples of the aggregates to see which is well suited in terms of the strength of the material used and the um, proposed um, road load. So, here can be um, other variables you can go on adding more variables to it may be the weather conditions or may be the geographical terrain through which the road is there. So, and maybe you need to experiment on like the uh, different ag materials and their aggregates. So, um, which is going to work better in which situation, which weather condition and maybe also this may change due to based on the um, traffic load 
and so many other variables that we may think of. Mm, like our engineers of a, like a beverage company might be asked to come up with a special design of bottles and conduct experiments to find out like which is the one for the best grip. So, what is the shape of the bottle, how it lead to a grip. So, and also we may add more finer variables to it like who are the potential users maybe whether kids uh, for kids whether it is for a water bottle whether something zipper should be there or not whether the cap should have a lock or not. So, these kind of thoughts like which occur at the back of designing a bottle. So, may bring in new changes in the design which is we thought or think of while designing bottles and may lead to like different set of experiments to come out with the best possible design. Now, what are the benefits of experimentation is? So, one of the first benefit that we can understand is coming up with the best version of the product by trying on various iterations. Utilizing experiments as a means to seek feedback and carrying out further improvements. Technically, it may seem a perfect product, but it might vary when executed behaviorally. Experiments help us to find out behavioral usage flaws. For example, the design of water bottle may seem to be perfect with respect to its engineering specifications, so, but might be a pain when the holder is for long by the person using it. So, somebody when holds it for long may be having certain problems uh, with it. So, uh, otherwise it may be sound, but here will come to a um, decisional dilemma. Now, where ethics creeps in over here like why we are discussing it under the uh, domains of engineering uh, ethics and first is the case like what we put into the primary focus over here and of course, like uh, the uh, care and a caring aspect for the beneficiaries. Second is if there is a uh, like conflict of interest happening like you have thought of certain design, but when it comes which may be according to you is experimentally sound, but may it may so happen like when the beneficiaries are telling then you find like you are getting reports of um, not like it is not um, suiting their purpose. Then uh, should you like it is maybe you have the right to explain your design and see it is getting done, but when it is a concern for your beneficiaries maybe it is a caring aspect which is more important and you need to have maybe a relook into what you do and it is where your duty to relook comes in so that you can answer better to the needs of your uh, beneficiaries. And also when it comes towards like because we understand however uh, you are designing what is the material that you are using and what is the outcome and what would be the possible side effects of your experiments or the products or the design that you are doing probably it is there with you, but the ultimate beneficiaries do not come to know about it. So, always there is an information asymmetry between what you know and what the others who will be ultimately using it know of because it may not be possible for them to understand what is the mixing that you are doing, what you are thinking because the design is there with you. So, in that case it becomes really very important to understand your values and to go be dutiful to checking each and every of the steps to see um, being proactive in seeing like whether you are using the correct material, whether you are um, compromising on the safety or not, whether you are compromising on the health issues or not. Because whatever you give 
uh, to the beneficiaries, they may be accepting it with the total based on the total trust that they may have on you. So, in that case it is a part of the duty and responsibility of the engineers to see like they are not playing with the trust of the public in general. So, in these aspects, so how to take care of the design flaws, to what extent you need to be careful, to what extent you need to be very specific to find out like errors are not there. So, what is the extent of it and you may say like it is much deeper into the fact because the knowledge lies with you, the what you want to get as an outcome lies with you and there the public at large to have a trust on you and for that you owe to them this like uh, this this part is called due care you need to take uh, due care and responsibility for the uh, safety and security of the public at large and you cannot compromise on these issues and you need to be extremely careful at each of the steps of your experiments to find out what would be the possible sources or error which you have noted maybe till presently which you have not noted but you need to like maybe extend your um, imagination to possible to find out like what could be the possible misuses and what error it may lead to and whether through your design you can arrest those things like um, at the um, um, proactively instead of waiting and be on a reactive mode to find out let some incident happen and from that incident we are going to learn and then going to take some remedial measures of it. So, continuing the discussion we see like like for all engine projects, engineering projects are also carried out in partial ignorance. So, uncertainties are there at every step. So, uh, in abstract models used to for design calculations or in the characteristics of the material purchased and for execution of the projects etcetera. So, because there are so much of uncertainties and risk involved and because we are responsible for the safety and security and health issues of the uh, public at large, engineers need to be extremely careful and duty conscious for while executing each of the steps of a particular project or experiment. Sometimes engineers have to bypass the exploration and laboratory testing for the sake of moving the projects ahead and to have to rely on their knowledge and wisdom to uh, make things work out in the field. But again this is a, this could be a conflict of interest like seeing your own uh, getting your um, own individual interest or maybe your com company's interest and it is the interest of the public at large. You have to question yourself for what is the seriousness and urgency of your project and what is the um, ultimate like outcome it may be there, what is the degree of harm that may be done if you are bypassing the important steps of exploration and laboratory testing just for the sake of moving the projects ahead can you compromise on these things and what is the if you are compromising what is the extent of harm that you are uh, looking forward to and what will be the spread of that can you really compromise on these things or not for this short term outcome which mean short term gain which may lead to a long term disaster so can you really do it or not so, be, because it is an uncertainty and how much you can rely on your knowledge and wisdom, have you tested for everything, have you rationally justified for everything. So, these are the questions that we need to ask ourselves.
So what happens often in engineering it is not known what the possible outcomes are. Like even after a dam is built it may not serve the purpose for which it was built. However, that the damage that is done to the region um, has already been done. So, it is very important to look at this from the utilitarian perspective, rights and duties perspective, justice perspective and of course, caring perspective to find out the pros and cons of the action uh, and the uh, long term after effect of in terms of the harm provided uh, as a consequence of our action and whether that really justifies our action or not. So, like the failure of a nuclear test is not just a failure, it may have a far reaching impact on the area as well as in the life surrounding it. So, in the future when we will have the case discussion sessions, we will discuss more in details about it from the cases, but these are certain like whether we can really do it and can we be casual about not doing a laboratory test or not doing a proper survey to find out to what could be the degree of risk involved or not if our experiment is going to fail, if everything is not going to work properly then what is going to happen, can we really compromise on that part or not. The classic example is of the nano car which is designed to fulfill the dreams of millions, but you know, sometimes what happens fire outbursts are unexpected and unpredictable. So, what can be done in that begin the effort to provide a low priced car, what are the things that we can really compromise on, can we compromise on the safety aspect of the car to make it a low price. So, these are questions that we need to answer. So, what we have understand, uh, we have to understand like engineering experiments are mm, ongoing process, it continues even after the product leaves the factory, because once it reaches the beneficiaries you do not know like how they are going to use it and what could be the after sales like problems coming up, where they, they will need services from you, what will be the nature of problem and whether you need to modify your uh, design or not to take care of those problems in future um, time. So, this is an ongoing process and it never stops after the factory product leaves the factory, but it continues uh, after that also. So, constant monitoring and this can be done through constant monitoring which can help to great deal in carrying out further improvements in designing the uh, products. To monitor is to is about making periodic improvements to identify the unintended side effects and it should not be restricted with the factory as ultimate purpose of the product is solved when it delivers values to the society at large. So, their feedback is essential. So, how you improve your supply chain, how you connect to your customers and get a feedback from them, how you incorporate that feedback and improve on your design, like how much importance and weightage do you give to that feedback and do uh, are you open to like even negative feedbacks or not and what you do about it, these are also ethical questions that you need to ponder upon. So, if you are trying to contrast engineering experiments with other experiments, what we find here is that in standard experiments, one group receives the special experimental treatment, while the other is called a control group does not receive any such treatment. The comparison is done at a later stage to report results. 
This may not be possible in engineering experiments until and unless they are carried out in laboratories. So, you in many cases you may or may not have a totally controlled uh, situation. So, in engineering experiments clients or consumers exercise control because it is they who choose to buy or to use the product. So, which product will be uh, seeing the repeat cycle of getting produced again depends in many cases on whether it is being bought by the you know, greater society at large or not. So, if people if you the end users are not interested in it may be you do not go on for producing it. So, they actually it is they who are exercising the control on the uh, products. So, another thing which is important for engineering products which is very very important today for any kind of research also is it is a call for informed consent. Testing drugs more so in case of pharmaceutical research and all is cannot be done on human until and unless their consent is taken. So, for in medical experiments it is very important like the people give their because the safety issues are there it is important that they give their free will to participate in medical experiments and they are aware of it of the maybe the side effects and other things. So, it involves two things knowledge and voluntariness. So, when you are talking of informed consent and knowledge we are talking of the knowledge of the maybe giving awareness to the person in terms of sharing of information to the subjects where nothing should be hidden from them more specifically the side effects. So, this um, not only is restricted to experiments it holds equally good for products also. So, it is the duty of the engineers to um, make people aware of the side effects of the products if there are any. They should be given full information about risks involved as the and the benefits of the product. Voluntarily, voluntariness means that the subject should agree to be a part of the experiments at their free will, not by coercion or force. So, it is like after knowing the side effects after knowing maybe the whole process of how the experiment is carried out they should be consenting on their own on their free will they should not be doing it under coercion or force in totality these two characteristics of knowledge awareness and informed consent together makes the knowledge and voluntariness together makes the informed consent. So, when a consent is given voluntarily, so it is very definitely required like every information is shared with the rational person and before he says yes as a subject and the person who has given the consent it, it needs to be checked like that person is not too young or not under intoxication or not mentally ill means the person who has given the consent is a rational person who has a rational sense of discriminating between what is good, what is bad, what is right and what is wrong and can make a informed decision well informed decision and after the decision has been made he or she has given the consent for the research. So, not 
in terms of knowledge gained, scientific experiments are most probably conducted to gain knowledge, but this may not be the case of engineering experiments. Because engineering ex in ex engineering experiments there are so much of uncertainties and involved and it is an ongoing process where at every step the outcome gives the feedback based on what is the changes in processes needs to be made. We need to be prepared for unexpected results and we need to make our plans accordingly if some unexpected things are happening what we are learning from them so that we can correct on our plans that we have made and relook at the design so that these problems get arrested. That is why what, what we are discussing now is that of engineers as responsible experimenters. So, as engineers are the main technical enablers or facilitators to carry out the experiments, their expertise puts them in a unique position of responsibility, the position of responsibility. Apart from displaying technical competence, engineers are expected to protect the safety of human subjects and respect their right of consent. Constant awareness and imaginative for forecasting of side possible side effects. So, we have to extend our ethical imagination and to find out what could be the possible harms, even if we have not been able to understand at present what could be the how to connect the unconnected parts and to find out what could be the possible harms done in future and how whether we can take care of it at the design part itself or like how, what are the ingredients we are putting into the product or not what could be the long term effect of those things. So, it requires actually a personal involvement at all stages taking ownership of the experiment thinking at it is very close to oneself and monitoring it and taking accountability of the results. When you are talking of consciousness, it talks of the, it calls for engineers to exercise a full range of moral values and responsibilities in a given situation. So, engineers must may be working in situations under large bureaucracies, in situations of pressures and in salaries which may restrict them to see the larger picture, but again what are your virtues, what are your values which are guiding you, because you, you are actually the person who is responsible for the interest of the public at large, public who trust you, who depend on you and it is a duty for you to respect their trust. So, because you are the guardian of the welfare and society, um, welfare of the society and the society of people at large. So, can you compromise or, uh, that role or should you say no to that role and then if you realize your duties, then what are the actions that you need to take. So, when you are talking of consciousness, when you are talking of agreeing to certain things, it is considered to be blind without relevant factual information. So, it is the job of an engineer to first find out relevant information and then properly assess all the information for meeting the expected moral obligation. It relates to getting the full context of one's work. You have to need to explore all the possibilities, you have to extend your imaginative thought process to find out if something even is not appearing to be harmful at present, can it in the long term affect the safety and health of the public at large. So, if that is so, 
then should we maybe use this ingredient, not use this ingredient, if we feel like it is important to what extent we should use it and should we make the public aware of the possible side effects or not or a series of questions that you need to answer to yourself and share it with your beneficiaries at large, so that they can take a informed decision of their choices. So, when you are talking of moral autonomy, it is the people are morally autonomous when their moral conduct and principles of action are their own. The attitude of management plays a decisive role in how much moral autonomy the engineers feel they have. It would be of great interest of any organization if engineers are given a great degree of latitude in exercising their personal judgment and moral issues relevant to their job. So, we may tell like we are working for the employer and we need to take the employer's interest first, but if we have, but this is where our professional ethics helps us to answer this dilemma. As an engineer, we do have a, uh, we have taken a professional oath, we have of uh, the profession itself guides us towards certain values and gives us certain roles and in that the safety and security health and welfare of the people at large are our major responsibilities to look after these factors are major responsibilities of engineers. So, we just cannot tell like we are working for a company and we have to be loyal to their interest first, but if you find like what they are doing is coming in conflict with this other responsibility that we have. So, the uh, responsibility towards the safety and security of the society at large is one of the primary responsibility and if required our professional ethics guides us to voice for the like practices um, done by your company and we can always ask to them to change or have a relook into their processes so that we are not compromising on the safety and security of the public at large. So, there comes the question of accountability, responsible people must accept moral responsibility of their actions, engineers should be ready to submit their actions to moral scrutiny and be open to assessment from others. So, we should be open enough because there are so much of uncertainties involved in each step of the design and ways of executing it, engineers should be ready to submit their actions to moral scrutiny and take a proper feedback from others and work on those feedbacks to have a relook into their design and ways of doing things, because ultimately what is their role and responsibility is towards the welfare of the public at large and there is what we cannot something which we cannot compromise with and for that we should be open to suggestion, open to critical commands to maybe modify the ways that we are thinking, the ways that we are doing the experiments, the outcomes that we are having, the way that the experiments are designed. So, that have we taken care of all the possible hazards that would be happening, have we tested for them and have you seen the outcome or we have tried to just look into something which gives us a favorable result as expected. Have we explored for the unexpected results and the uh, reasons for it and tried to take care of it by again doing experiments to find out why this thing happened why something happened which was not expected, what is the reason behind it, where, where it went wrong and again doing some recheck, re-evaluating of it and coming back through these processes of iteration to reduce the risk, reduce the harm 
and emerge as a design which comes up to be the best design for the thing that we are trying to give to the beneficiaries in a large scale. Thank you.